Welcome, Welcome to, to this generation. generation. <laughs> Hello, welcome to This Generation. I'm Barbara Johnson. Today we'll travel south to Port Graham. It's going to be a great show. This Generation will be right back! <laughs> Turn it up! Do we have a swimmer for lane four? Just tell your teammates you missed the race because you were getting stoned. Swimmers, take your mark. They'll understand. These snow-capped mountains in southern Alaska are the backyard to several native villages. The village of Port Graham and its neighbor, Nunwalik, lie at the southern tip of the Kenai Peninsula. Eleanor McMullen is the retired village chief of Port Graham and shares much of the local history. Uh, Port Graham is made up of uh, several people from various parts of Alaska um, and, and nearby and further away. Uh, some of them traveled from, from the Prince William Sound area this way, and then some Kenaitse people and Seldovia people, and people from across the inlet, Iliamna area. So we're made up of a lot of different people. And in 1912, I think what they say, it was officially settled. People had lived in this bay prior that, a nomadic life. They traveled from various um, places where they had brabras built, and depending on the salmon and the fishing season, they traveled within the bay to to put up their supplies for the winter and brought entire families with them as they traveled. Some people like to go out the road and fish, like at Windy Bay or Rocky Bay. Those are two main places where people like to fish, or either you could go out the bay and fish. Christine Smith, an eighth grader at Port um, Graham Elementary High School, talks a little about village life. They like to dry, hang dry them in the smokehouse. I'll either go to my friend's house and hang out, or I'll go to the store, or walk around or come here when they're muscalotting. Especially in the summertime, we go down to the beach, beach and, and swim. And, uh, yeah, and catch fish right off of the shores. And um, minnows. Yeah, and minnows. And humpy. That's a fish. Silver <laughs> 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 trout. Yeah, silvers, trouts. King um, salmon. King uh -huh. salmon. Red halibut. Salmon. Red salmon. 
red, red salmons. <laughs> During the month of January, the holidays last for many days. It starts with the celebration of Christmas on the 7th, which is part of the Orthodox religion. From the 8th until the 17th, many festivities take place, including starring, caroling, masking, and the celebration of New Year's. Yeah, this uh, masking ceremony is, is uh, part of the uh, Russian Orthodox Christmas ceremony, um, and then masking starts up, and we go from the 9th to the 14th, where uh, they do the New Year's <clears throat> celebration, and then we have three more days after that, from the 15th through the 17th, and the last day, that's the last day. Um, Here in Nunwalak on the 14th, the New Year is an event with a very special dance that tells the story of an eager New Year and a stubborn old year who doesn't want to leave. While the New Year and the old year battle it out, the wives of the old year entertain the audience with practical jokes and pranks. <laughs> Tim Melchoff starred in the Port yeah. Graham performance. Last night, I participated in being an Ojingok, that's six student for the old lady, or an old, old month of last year. The old lady's job is to go around and have fun, mess around, and trip her, you feel like the new, new months. The new months is just mainly just their job to be the whole new months of the year within the new year, who is somebody is dressed up real nice and represents the new year and the old man, or it's just the old year. His job is going around trying to be, act like he is the same as the new year. He wants to be back in there again. Christmas, the ritual of masking starts. Here in Port Graham, masking is an event that has taken place for years. John Moonen, a subdeacon for the Russian Orthodox Church, talks about the history of masking. What I know a little bit about mask dancing is from what my dad used to tell me. It came from Russian. And all of <clears throat> before the Russian came. All the alerts in Anulik and some all other places, they danced like all the rest of the Alaskan natives with the drums, to dance and not masking. That's, this masking came from Russia, Thailand. And, and after they taught them this and they told them what what mask dancing is represent during the Russian Orthodox Christmas time. He told him about it. Here are soldiers looking for baby Jesus to kill him. That's that's what this mask dancing represent. And even though I guess some some were scared of it after, and some still took it as a traditional use of what the Russian taught them. Mm -hmm. When, when people got together in a home, I remember at my grandmother's house, she'd say that after she got married and had a family of her own, um, her husband bought her a, a small accordion, and she learned to use that. And her, her husband then played the, the, the guitar, and she said they would play, make music. When they had company, they would have their food and make music. And she said they would dance uh, um, 
they, the people that had traveled from, from the neighboring villages wore their, uh, their, their animal faces and masks and danced. And uh, a lot of it was um, uh, mimicking the animals, the way their movements were and their sounds they made. And uh, she said, my mother said, sometimes it was frightening to, um, to see and be that close to an animal that, she said sometimes it would, they, it would, they would take on and look almost like the real, real a live animal because of the sounds and the way they danced and, and, and performed. From what my father told me, the priest and the bishop was trying to, they were going to put stop to it, and uh, lots of people wanted to keep it you know, for just to entertain him. So they had no other, besides the native dance, they, they had no other uh, festival type of uh, play. So they, so they they let him kept kept it. To see how long it, it'll go on. It's still going on since. Since that time, as early as 1800s. The event is held at the Port Graham Community Center. The community hall is uh, the council offices, uh, but the whole community center is used for activities, the annual meetings of both the corporation and the village council, potlucks. Uh, for just celebration of elders or celebration of somebody, some family group, uh, potlucks after funerals. Uh, and it's also here for activities that uh, the council goes after grants for uh, the youth. And uh, it's truly available for the community's uh, needs. Adults can use it, uh, youths can use it uh, during the week in the weekends uh, community dances are held here that means the hall the new year's and the holiday to make it uh make people funny make this little guy gave us a walking tour uh we do homework and stuff and sell suckers and and we earn money. We have to sell them at one dollar, like I have in my hand. And we bake them, and we pick the flavors we want. Okay, I'm getting dizzy. Many of the youth of Port Graham look forward to the event. Almost all of the dancers are in elementary and high school. You could wear, like, slippers or, like, um, roller blade insides. <laughs> it, it, you just wear something that that you think will be interesting and make people laugh. Just make it. You just try to make it really fun. We get most of the elders come over just to watch the the younger kids. And maybe some adults go out. And they dress up in masks that they made before beforehand and. They just put on a whole bunch of masks and different clothing and... Really and, geeky clothing. Yeah, and try to just make it fun for everyone. The idea is to uh, disguise yourself and when you come in it's to entertain the, uh, the audience in terms of how you've uh, dressed up, whether you're trying to be funny or or uh, with the expression on the mask that you make, uh, try to act that out and uh, dance to the rhythm of the, the music that the band plays. Like a guy could dress up in like a dress, a girl's dress and shoes and everything. They could put fake hair on and make braids or anything. And us girls, we could like wear really baggy clothes. Sometimes the, like, some people just take people's clothes that they that they will wear that don't want anymore. No, they some sometimes they take people's clothes that they're wearing like 
Like if I went masking and somebody wanted to use my sweater and my shoes just to see if anyone will think it'll be me, they could do that and just put on a mask and you can trade clothes with people. And it's just really fun trying to get people to laugh and see if they, you can fool, fool some people just to think they're somebody else. Stay tuned. This generation will be right back. For generations, the Chupik Eskimos of Nunavak Island have maintained the finest herd of reindeer anywhere in the world. The flavor and nutrition of these magnificent free-range deer is unmatched and is now available in commercial USDA-inspected lots. This is the only official outlet for authentic Nunavak reindeer meat. For more information or to place an order, contact Nunavak Reindeer and Seafood Products, Box 42, McCorriac, Alaska, 99630, or call 907-827-8015. Supplies are limited. Right now in your home, there is something dangerous. So dangerous, it can cause instant death. Kids as young as 10 sniff ordinary household products to get high. They don't know that sniffing can be fatal. Talk to your kids. If you know what they're doing, they're much less likely to sniff inhalants. It's tax season and living in rural Alaska means that it could take weeks, even months, to get your tax returns in the mail. It's always two weeks, sometimes six to eight weeks if I remember correct. Let Liberty Tax take away the worry and the wait. Simply pick up the phone and call toll free 1-866-563-2700. You can file your taxes electronically from the comfort of your home and you can usually pick up your return the next day at your local AC store. I go through John Hostetter. I trust him. I think I've got more on my returns with him than I would by myself. Liberty Tax guarantees the largest refunds at a smaller price and can often put money in your pocket the very same day. Quick and easy for me. So don't wait around for your tax returns in the mail. Give Liberty Tax a call. Liberty Tax, specializing in rural Alaska. Fast, friendly, trustworthy. That's how I feel with them. John's good people. Mind, body, and spirit. I'm a naturopathic physician. Tobacco is, is a symptom of often mind, body, spirit reaction to trying to get back into balance. Nicotine's definitely something that's uh, been put on the list as potent and as addictive as heroin. If you look deeper at finding your peace of mind, incredible experience actually. We are how we live, mind, body, and spirit. Flying in Alaska? Fly Frontier, the official airline of Heartbeat Alaska. Frontier is expanding again. They've added new routes to Nome, Kotzebue, and the surrounding villages. As you can see, Frontier is now really covering Alaska. So the next time you fly, try Frontier. Frontier offers quick, convenient check-in, low fares, and service direct to many of the villages. Frontier Flying Service is the official airline of Heartbeat Alaska. Make it your official airline, too. Just tell your teammates you blew their shot of the title because you've been smoking weed. They'll understand. Soon, many people from the village begin to feel the community center. A band is there to play the traditional music that the performers will dance to. One of the old <clears throat> Russian alert music, you know, what Russian brought to Alaska, and their way of playing guitar. One of the guitars is doing it to Russian. And we just follow that. The, the lead, the lead of the guitar the music. No one sings, but play the music with the guitar. We'll, we'll be playing off and on, depends how many dancers come in, they, they, they take breaks and go on until midnight. Anyway. 
Meanwhile, at the fire station, the youth are busy dressing up and putting on their masks. <laughs> their goal is to dress in a way that will keep the audience guessing who's who. This tradition has evolved over the years. And they celebrate it in a little different way than what we do now. Um, the masquerading was done with, um, I remember my grandmother saying that Grandpa had, uh, he would wear the face of a freshly caught seal. And bloody and gory as it was, she said she'd wear, he'd wear that and then perform and dance. As he entered a home, he would collect different kinds of food as they come from Nunwalik over this way. Uh, clams and baidarkis and, and uh, different seafood along the, from along the shore. And then they would present that, some of that, to the various people's homes that they visited and danced at. And in turn, those people then had food prepared and fed them and, and uh, provided hot tea. Finally, the music starts and the kids begin their dance. The youngsters kind of start out uh, being kind of self self conscious, so they're kind of just milling around. But then, as you get up to the older older folks, you get uh, to where, where they're more active in terms of their body movements and gestures and stuff. In order to become less uh, self conscious and more expressive in their in their ability to uh, dance to the music without being uh, inhi inhibited so the older ones tend to be more uh, outgoing and active in between the rounds of dancing Eddie and Ida Johnston play the accordion while the audience waltzes our son, uh, Daryl, is the principal school teacher here at Port Graham, and um, this is his second year. We came over last year and visited, and we brought our accordions with us, and they had a function at the school, and they asked us to play there, and we did, and uh, the people in the village liked it. They used to play accordions here, and they haven't heard it for a long time. So uh, Daryl invited us back this year for the uh, masking ceremony and for the New Year's celebration and told us to bring our accordions. And that's how we got involved. And so they've just kind of had us play in between some of the sessions out there. It's, it's a real charge. It's, um, we just, our children have all grown up and this is something that we both found fun to do together and it's good happy music and good friends and music always brings friends and family together.
people are wonderful here. It's a beautiful scenery, a beautiful setting, and uh, they make you feel so much at home here when you come. They just, uh, just like your family almost, and so it, it's neat. Uh, we just uh, in, enjoy it a lot to come over. We, and, the, and the youth are wonderful. They, and they don't even mind talking to adults. They're just uh, great, great families here. <laughs> Outside, the youth take a breather and prepare for the next round. The dancing begins again. Even some of the elders participate. The festival goes on until about midnight. The ceremony of masking will continue until the 17th. At the end, the dancers must each try to catch their shadow. They say, the old, old people say that if you go around and if you mask and you don't catch your shadow on the last night, they say that your shadow stays dancing in the, in the community. community center until, until you catch it. In Port Graham, the holiday season is a celebration of more than just families, but a celebration of the entire community, young and old. Thank you for watching This Generation. I'm Barbara Johnson. We'll see you next time.